it's winter and I'm headed to a place where birds from different parts of the world congregate in huge numbers. This place has been recognized as one of the prime locations of bird migrations in India. This is Bharatpur in Rajasthan. The landscape contains mostly wetlands, woodlands and woodland swamps and all the habitats are left alone untouched since long. The marshes stretches as far as one can see and provide sanctuary to a variety of birds and animals. For decades, vegetation has accumulated in these water bodies, transforming them into swamps, which provides food and shelter to various species. A very few of such wetland ecosystems exist nowadays which should be protected as our modern technologies cannot build such habitats overnight. Some of these birds migrate halfway across the world, some crosses the Himalayas by flying over it to get to these feeding grounds as their lives depend on it. As the wetlands disappear, these birds struggle to survive. No wonder they show up in lesser and lesser number each year. Visiting the park, one can easily see these birds' different feeding behaviors. Some stick their head in the shallows to access the submerged vegetation, some prefers to graze on land, while some dives underwater to get their preferred aquatic plants. When the seasonal visitor seems to be busy feeding to build up a fat reserve, the residents may be seen just enjoying the warmth of the first rays of sun. And not just birds, this park shelters a good number of mammals too. A few of them may also have wings. There are species which doesn't require huge territories. Species that can sustain its survival with very little resources. Just like this golden jackal scavenging on a carcass. Yet, they are disappearing due to growing urban development. We need to spare such pockets of nature for them as the world is theirs too as much as it is ours. It's mid-March. I'm in the eastern Himalayas to look for some high-altitude residents. The forest here is cold, wet and dark, far away from the approaching summer heat of the plains. The vegetation is mostly covered in moss and hardly any light penetrates through the canopy.
yet some birds prefer this habitat like this Himalayan woodpecker. It's time for the rhododendron blossoms as well and they attract all kind of visitors. Some of them are winged and helps the flower to pollinate. Due to the high altitude and low temperature, insect activities are limited in these regions. Pollination of the rhododendron flowers are mostly carried out by these passerine birds. It's hard to survive the cold winter and some easy meal provided by humans are always welcome. At a comparatively lower altitude, life is much cozier and can support a wider variety of bird life. The blue-capped rock thrush seems to be waiting for the first sun rays to warm him up. And so does the common hoopoe. Activities begin as it turns out to be a bright sunny day. Trees bearing ripe fruits become hornbill hotspots, as very few trees in a forest bears ripe fruits at once. One can observe all kind of bird behaviors like feeding, fighting rivals and even courtship if he could be a little patient. Some of the residents are so rare they are only found in this part of the world, like this rufous necked hornbills. Only about 7000 individuals remain in the wild. Aceros nepalensis. Latin name nepalensis literally means it's from Nepal. But the sad truth is that the species is now extinct in Nepal. They were extensively hunted by poachers and tribals for their feathers and beaks. While it's easy to spot some species, some prefers hiding in plain sight, wearing camouflage plumage and blending in with the surroundings. Take the colored scoops owls for example. The Himalayan Griffon is another rarity found in this part of the Himalayas. It's midsummer, and temperature rises up to a soaring 47 degrees Celsius at some places. 
and most part of the Indian subcontinent is undergoing shortage of water. The once green meadows now looks like a dry, arid, lifeless wasteland. Very few places where wildlife still thrives are beside lakes and water bodies. Flamingos are one incredible species that easily withstands the extreme summer heat. In fact, they thrive in such conditions, as the summer produces the blue-green algae that they prefer. Along the water bodies and in the surrounding, life seems less unforgiving. But there are places where the shallow pools entirely dry up and the animals has to survive months with little to almost no water at all. The dried twigs and leaves that these chinkaras munch on has no moisture in it. At this point, they can only hope for the monsoon to arrive. After a long wait, the downpour begins. And in some places like this, in the Western Ghats, this continues for months at a stretch. With the sceneries turning green again, life seems to start fresh. Birds build their nests and prepare to welcome a new generation. The nooks and corners that we humans has not transformed into concrete jungles fills up with wings and chirps. And the cycle of life goes on. It's your compliments, suggestions and good wishes that drives me to continue my journeys into the wild. It's only you people who can keep me going on my quests and bring you moments from the wild. Please support my channel by sharing my videos with like-minded people and subscribe. Let's hope that those left alone untamed remains wild and free.